Okay, good morning everyone. Uh, today's lecture topic is relining, rebasing, and repair and complete denture. Okay, so coming to the learning outcomes. So at the end of the lectures, uh, you all will be able to describe various techniques involved in the denture repair, relining, and rebasing. Also, you'll be able to identify potential problems associated with denture repair, relining, and rebasing. Rebasing. Sorry. Okay, coming to rebasing. So rebasing is a procedure replacing all the denture materials of the denture. Only the original teeth or the teeth arrangement would remain. So it consists it consists of replacing all the denture base with a new denture material. Okay, coming to the general complaints, why do we have to do these procedures? So uh, one reason can be looseness, which is like the ill-fitting dentures. There is always inflammation and soreness in the tissue regions, um, the ridge region, sorry. And uh, there is a chewing inefficiency uh, over a period of time. So the patient is using for a long time still. He's not able to masticate and aesthetic issues. Okay. So coming to the objectives. So the main objectives are a few. That is to reestablish the correct relation of the denture to the basal tissues to, to restore stability retention, which is one of the uh, most important factors uh, in fabrication of a complete denture. Another one is to restore lost occlusal and maxillomandibular relationship. So to restore jaw relationship in short. Okay, so indication of relining. So there are many more indications. These are the main indications which uh, we should be we should be focusing on, which is the alveolar ridge resorption, decrease of crucial vertical dimension, so the reduction in the VDO, and immediate denture. So you'll have to again reline them after the healing of the tissue. Okay, so there are many contraindications. So these are especially in the unresolved TMJ issues, disharmony, and uh, myofascial pain. Also, uh, if there is abuse tissues, there's pathological issues in the mucosa, there's inflammation, uh, the teeth setting which was done is in a mal position, um, there are multiple fractured tooth or really worn out artificial tooth, then we do not use it. Uh, any unfavorable occlusal plane which produces a poor appearance so sometimes you'll see unfavorable occlusal planes when um, uh, maybe there is opposing to then we are uh, doing like a single complete denture right uh, so if occlusal plane is not fine we should not be um, you know relining the same denture relining or rebasing the same denture so if they are deflective occlusal contacts so which so the deflective occlusal contacts mean so it's like a condition in which um, the uh, tooth contact divert the mandible from the normal path of closure so uh, they are going to divert the closure of the mandible in different directions so these are the deflective contacts so it's present in the center relation which is greater than 2 mm and in horizontal and 3 mm in the vertical okay okay so a vertical dimension of occlusion that must be increased more than 3 to 5 mm so the video if it has to be increased a lot then it's not indicated then it's contraindicated again if there is a lack of interocrucial space then also this is contraindicated okay so coming to the general consideration prior to relining or rebasing. So that is satisfactory video. Um, if there is a satisfactory video, if the uh, centric occlusion coincides with the centric relation, then we can do it. So if there is a satisfactory aesthetics, definitely we can do it. If there's healthy tissue, the denture extension is fine. And uh, there is a satisfactory, a satisfactory speech can be done okay so there are various materials which is used and then we'll come to the various techniques so firstly is the PMMA that is obviously polymethyl methacrylate uh, comes in two forms the heat cure and the cold cure modification of PMMA is a butyl meth 
acrylate. So this also can be used. Soft liners or the tissue conditioners can be used. So these are plasticized acrylic resin. So chemically activated and heat activated. Chemically is the short term denture liners and heat activated are the long term denture liners. Okay, coming to vinyl resins and silicon materials, which is chemically and heat activated. Okay, coming to the procedures first before doing any relining rebasing we're supposed to do some tissue preparation so comes to the tissue rest so uh, first of all the denture should be left out of the mouth for two or three days before making the final impression okay massage of the soft tissues uh, two or three times a day to simulate uh, the blood supply and aid in the recovery so massaging leave out of position is done and then now use of the tissue conditioner indication extensive tissue abuse is there a patient cannot leave the dentures out for tissue recovery so obviously um this cannot be uh, done so these are the indications of uh, tissue conditioner and the time period is of course it has to be renewed pre periodically three to seven days because this is not a permanent treatment and it's not a permanent material right it's a temporary material so uh, what is the result the tissues then will return into a healthy state and then patient can be scheduled for final impression so coming to another management is uh, of the tissues before doing the relining the pre uh, treatment can be done is surgical management so excessive hypertrophic uh, tissue should be surgically removed the denture can be used as a surgical splint okay and then the denture preparation is done so um, once the denture preparation is done uh, we have to reduce all the sharp border any or extension has to be reduced uh, pressure areas in the tissue has to be relieved under person relieved minor occlusal disharmonies have to be corrected uh, the correct posterior seal palatal seal has to be established before the impression impression surface to be trimmed about one mm to allow space for new impression okay so the treatment uh, basically is divided into three uh, types that is the clinical lab and uh, chair side Coming to the clinical procedure, so in the clinical there is a static method which has a uh, open uh, mouth technique, closed mouth technique and functional technique. Lab procedure which is articulator method, jig method, plus method and then coming to the chair set. Okay. Uh, okay, so you can see that the denture is taken out from the patient's mouth. Uh, the surface has been trimmed the borders are trimmed a little bit now the uh, bottom bonding materials is put and then the final impression material is put on top okay so advantage is that selective trimming helps in making the selective pressure impression okay so we can provide the pressure at the right places inter occlusion inter occlusion record is more reliable um and uh, stable basis allow operator to concentrate more on the jaw relations, right? So uh, these are the advantage of that method. Disadvantage is difficult procedure because more clinical and lab work is involved. And a closed mouth technique is another technique which is used in the clinical method. So reline or rebase cannot be done simultaneously for maxillary and mandibular dentures in this technique. So firstly, centric relation is there. So dentures used as a denture, a record base in jaw relation, relations recorded after making secondary impressions. Uh, denture preparation is done. So posterior parietal seal is formed in modeling compound before any changes are made. So basically, okay, fine. We are not using the, the really uh, the modeling compound. So uh, we have to recognize that there is a a distinct uh, PPS which is shown okay and uh, one mm space is provided inside the denture for new impression material to flow and of course uh, same thing the borders are shortened mm so that we get the proper border molding material so uh, border molding definitely is done when there's inadequate flange okay and then it can be corrected uh, impression ZNOA impression is taken so 15 seconds after the denture has been placed in the mouth the patient is asked to 
pull his upper lip down and open the mouth mouth wide okay so we're just doing the denture um what do you call the impression procedure all right and uh, that's how then the impression is uh, okay coming to the advantages the trimming of the denture and uh, making room for the impression material will facilitate the making of reasonable impression during selective pressure impression techniques okay without any deflections or without any closure interferences separate interclusion record will allow the operator to concentrate on recording the jaw relation it is possible to verify the centric relation record if necessary interclusion record made with quick setting plaster is a reliable one so this also can be used okay so coming to the disadvantage this uh, technique requires more clinical and lab time and performing the procedures is sorry here we are not required to use any lab procedures so tissue conditioner is used as an impression material so it, here it is the tissue conditioner is there okay so it looks like a transparent translucent material white color so you can just uh, put it in the mouth and just uh, put it uh, on the denture base and uh, um, on the tissue surface and tell the patient to close the mouth and do the bottom, bottom holding uh, uh, movements and it will be recorded and it will stay in place. So tissue conditioner is usually soft liner with following characteristics. So we are talking basically about soft liner, so which is easy to use. It is excellent for refilling complete dentures. It's capable of retaining for many weeks. It has a good dimensional stability, good in bonding of uh, to resin uh, denture base. Okay, so the procedure goes as follows. So um, the occlusal error should be corrected so that the centric occlusion coincides with the centric relation. Okay, so this is a very important thing which has to be taken care of. So uh, tissue surface is reduced to accommodate the tissue conditioning material. Okay, tissue surface is dried and tissue uh, conditioning material is placed. Uh, it should flow evenly as a thin layer and it should cover uh, the whole denture surface and the borders. Now the denture is inserted and the patient's mandible is guided to centric relation in order to stabilize the denture and the material is allowed to set. Okay, so once the material is set, the axis is removed, trimmed. Um, if there is a poor recording uh, has been done because of the unsupported area, the bottom molding is done with the green stick compound. Okay, so if there is any requirement, green stick compound can also be used. So anyway, after three to five days, dentures are examined for any uh, depressed surfaces which can be relieved. So it should be relieved after that uh, duration. The material should be renewed uh, once in three to five days till the tissue healing is complete so yes the patient has to come many times and uh, things have to be removed just it'll just uh, just uh, uh, what do you call it a scrape off easily it just you can just take it out with your hand um, sometimes you'll have to use the burr if it's uh, set uh, in a hard uh, manner so uh, then impression with ZNO is taken over uh, the tissue conditioner material and a uh, cast is poured immediately okay during the previous visit an accurate orientation uh, record of the maxillary denture should be recorded okay so the orientation jaw relation is also important which uh, should have been established or you establish again okay so advantages are abused tissues can return to normal uh, you know a condition a functional impression that incorporates the natural movements and relation of the joys developed by the patient okay so coming to the lab procedures so this is the second set of procedures this has two to three methods so coming to the articulator method so impression is made in the denture to be realigned okay and then the impression material uh, denture impression is poured in uh, the dentist stone so that you can you can see right this has been poured okay so now what happens is a uh, modeling clay is adapt uh, uh, you know clay adapted denture blocking out of the denture is done you can see it's done it's fixed everywhere okay except for the teeth stone is placed on the lower member 
and uh, smoothened with spatula okay so it's smoothened with spatula and the dentures settle in the uh, stone mix okay so that's how it looks when you when the uh, jake or the um the member you can open the articulator opens okay so all impression materials must be removed from the denture okay so a thin layer of resin must be removed from the inferior of the denture so we're just removing any other material any of the sorry any of the remaining acrylic material or resin material okay so uh, borders are reduced two to three mm as you can see any of the notches are uh, obviously um, deepened okay. so the cast which we obtained uh, what you saw in the first uh, photo so the, the any of the resins are grinded removed with the steam of air so anything is removed the PPS is highlighted and depressed uh, it's drawn and uh, um, uh, from the carver or from an, an instrument, uh, it is deepened in the cast. So for the proper visibility, um, so this paint foil substitute is uh, so a separating media basically is uh, painted over. So a poly uh, auto polymerizing resin is placed on the denture, okay, and of course, um, uh, all the air bubbles are, uh, you know, avoided. Uh, place uh, resin on cast and uh, so so uh, the resins are placed on the cast and in the border reflections okay denture is seeded in uh, indentation so uh, the denture is seeded again in the same indentation as you remember in the first cast and the articulator is closed A relined, uh, a relined denture uh, cured in a pressure container uh, for 30 minutes. <coughs> Excuse me, sorry. Uh, so uh, it has been cured now. And then you can see that this is the relined denture, okay, with the, uh, the extra base. So you can see the extra base, the color, okay is examined for voids and nodules and it is finished and polished okay so now uh, coming to the lab uh, procedures okay uh, coming to the lab procedures for rebasing so uh, First one is the jig method. Uh, so in the jig method, what happens is uh, this is the jig which is there. Okay, uh, so it, it's um, like the stone index is formed in the lower member. So uh, you put uh, the POP or impression plaster, and uh, um, you just uh, embed the denture in it. So this is the lower member. Okay, this is our cast and the denture. So it is put in a in a duplicator or a jig, okay? Uh, denture mounted on its uh, cast to be relined, okay? So this is the jig and it's secured by the bolts so it doesn't move. Okay, so now what happens is, so uh, in this case, porcelain denture teeth were used. So uh, that's why we are talking here about uh, porcelain denture teeth. So the uh, same thing can be done by acrylic denture, denture teeth. So in this case, um, the teeth are removed from the denture by heating alcohol torch or hot spatula. So it is actually removed. It can be removed. Okay. So porcelain uh, uh, teeth have been replaced in their indentation in the stone index. So you remember the stone index we took. So the teeth are put in the stone index. So there now comes uh, the ridge area. So you adapt a... Uh, layer of base plate wax okay and assemble it back to the jig okay so wax up of the denture teeth to base plate wax uh, okay is done remove uh, then we remove the cast flask and process the uh, process it with the heat cure uh, denture base resin okay so you can see everything has been done then the cure denture is placed on the jig to check the occlusion and finish and polish so 
the new denture is placed um, sorry here so the new denture again is placed and checked for any occlusal discrepancies and uh, any um, uh, overextensions and uh, it is uh, removed and uh, finished Okay, coming to the flask method in the laboratory method. So denture is half flasked. Okay, uh, silicone mold material is painted on the denture and teeth. So this is the method. Okay, flask is opened. Okay, so you will see that uh, the denture base is uh, on the other side, and of course the impression is on the other uh, member of the flask. So porcelain teeth looks like this, and resin teeth like what we do looks like this. Now, cast and investing stone is painted, okay? So, uh, it's just separating media basically is painted, okay? So, the denture is cured, ready for finishing and polishing. So, finishing and polishing is done, right? Okay, so heat cured relines have the following deficiencies. The patient must be without uh, his denture for a period of at least one day um, reheating the original denture base to cure the added uh, acrylic resin releases residual internal stress called wrappage so what does wrappage mean it means is um, any bending or twisting out of the shape which results basically from heat or damp is known as wrappage so that that can also you know take place uh, processing changes can take place Okay, if uh, you use an autopolymerizing material, then it can be mixed and poured. Do uh, just follow the manufacturing manufacturer's instruction. The duplicating uh, instrument is closed completely so that the master cast will be correctly positioned back within the denture. After curing, the denture is removed from the master cast and finished. Okay, so chair side procedure, the last procedure in the lab. Uh, yeah um the last procedure so we are finished with the lab procedures so the method takes uh method uh, uses the acrylic that can be just added to the denture and allowed to set in the mouth so it's like a instant relining rebasing thing so uh an example is rebase too okay Okay, so disadvantages are that it is an unpleasant to the patient. The flow of the material is kind of sluggish, so it's really doesn't flow at a proper uh, the way we want. Um, there can be adequate occlusion, which is very difficult to maintain. Uh, if it is not positioned properly, then it can go wrong. Border thickness and length are difficult to control. Uh, so, uh, tissue surface uh, defects are common. Porosities of resin is a problem. The color of the material is unstable. So you understand in short. Chair side material does not, chair side procedure does not work, guys. Okay? All right? So um, the clinical method is the best method. Lab methods are also good. Okay? So coming to the last part of the presentation, which are a few more slides, guys. So it's coming to the repair of the complete dent. Okay, so first so we can see what are the reasons of uh, denture uh, fractures. It can be during function or dropped on a hard surface, which we should not drop, right? So the key to repair is ac accurate reassembling and uh, 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 al alignment of the broken parts in their or original position, okay? So classification of the fractured dentures so it is according to the location, it is the midline, any part fractures, okay? Uh, according to the extent of the fracture without broken or missing part, with broken and missing part or teeth, according to timing of the fracture, early fracture, delayed fracture, so I'll tell you what that means, according to the cause of the fracture, so by the operator or by the patient, okay? So denture repair can be classified also in tooth replacement and fracture denture. So tooth replacement, anterior teeth, posterior teeth, these are more successful. Okay, coming to fractured teeth, uh, separated parts, so it can have non-separated parts or it can have missing parts, okay? Uh, most commonly seen are the midline fractures, mainly in the maxillary denture causes are um, insufficient relief in the midlines, okay? This is an, known as the early fraction, ridge resorption, which is a delayed fracture. This is a very common cause of 
uh, fractures in the dentures, okay? Residual bridge resorption, okay? All right, so procedure to repair the midline fracture. Broken parts are assembled and fixed together by sticky wax. You can see that sticky wax. And then just to strengthen, you can put burrs or plastic sticks to stabilize, okay? And then what happens is we block all the uh, the undercuts by wax or clay, okay? The fitting surface is painted with the uh, separated wheel. So now the stone cast is poured into the fitting surface, okay? It, it's, uh, uh, we let it settle and then the cast, the, the denture is clean and any sticky wax is removed, okay? Fracture edges are reduced, widened uh, and uh, beveled and polished and dovetails are created like you can see to strengthen the joints, okay? Repair joints, okay? And now cast is painted by separating media and the denture is uh, secured to the cast with the rubber band and sulcure acrylic uh, is placed and modified and filled and then la later you can, sorry, which can be repaired as mentioned. Fractured with missing or lost parts. So now we're going to concentrate on this. So what happens is an impression is made with the denture placed in patient's mouth. After pouring the cast, either a self-cure acrylic is placed, uh, applied or placed uh, to the missing part or wax is added and carved to reassemble the broken denture part. Okay, like that. Then the whole thing is flasked, packed and cured and finished and polished. So another method to do the same is a plaster index that is known as the key. This, this is the key, okay? To make a report and secure the position of back teeth. So teeth to be replaced, uh, repaired, are removed together with all wax around them. Okay, so all the wax are removed. The teeth are then put back exactly on the original uh, position aided by a plaster key. A self-cure acrylic resin is uh, added from the lingual side until repair area is overbuilt, okay? So um, you just place the self-cure acrylic and uh, then you cover it up and then after curing, the index is removed and the denture is finished and polished. So again, you can check if it is accurate or not, okay? So it's like a putty index, yeah, like that. So this is a plaster index, okay? You call it a Okay, now coming to the posterior teeth replacement, okay? So mounting of the denture done on an articulator. So we remove any fractured resin tooth by grinding it with a burr. So we take care to preserve the facial uh, gingival margin of denture base and not to perforate any of the base, okay? So uh, now we allow the the uh, tooth bearing surface to be modified and we correctly place the tooth okay now the articulator is closed uh, we check the occlusion it's correctly sealed properly with the wax okay and uh, again now you can paint the autopolymer polymerizing resin into the ridge lap area which is this and uh, the tooth is uh, uh, nicely sealed together on the denture base okay so place the okay so here all okay so now what you have to do is uh, anyway you just uh, cure it up it for 30 minutes and adjust the occlusion and uh, polish and repair and uh, the uh, denture and uh, not the denture the teeth and see if there are any high points you can just check and trim it off okay so now the dentures are finished and polished as you can see the photos okay so guys, uh, that was the end of our presentation. And uh, so coming to the conclusion, each of the method can produce um, satisfactorily uh, satisfactory result. Uh, success depends both on the clinical and lab skills of the operator, but reline or rebase are not uh, an accurate, adequate substitute for new dentures. Okay, so. We need to know when do we need to do these procedures and when do we actually need to make a completely new denture. And of course, also about repairs that 
we need to know when do we really need to repair the denture or do we have to just discard and make a new one okay so uh, guys you can read any of the complete dentures textbooks for this uh, topic uh, there are many there is Winkler voucher uh, many many are there okay so uh, and if you have any further questions guys uh, I'm always in the prosthetic department um, in polyclinic 3 uh, come and ask me for any doubts guys thank you for patient listening